What?
much for bringing us together this morning to praise you um, through this song and the other songs we've sang this morning. And let us remember, especially at this time, that Christ is enough. Christ is enough. That's all we need is Christ. Everything in this world can't amount to what Christ can give us. And it's, it's eternal life. We're accepting it. So we thank you for that precious gift this Christmas as we celebrate Christ and his birth and what that means to us as believers. Lord, I pray for everyone here to have that gift. Lord, it's, it's free for them to receive. We know that through your word. And Lord, if they don't have it yet, Lord, I pray that they, they come to know that today, that they can receive that gift. Lord, I ask blessings on the rest of the service. Lord, I pray for GCA to come to us this way that she's going to sing a few moments. Brother Andrew, he's going to preach. And I pray for them to have all those messages delivered to us, whatever way you see fit. And Lord, I thank you for the precious name of Jesus. And I pray all these things in the precious name of Jesus. When we go to a concert, uh, there's a band, the first band that comes out, not quite so successful, maybe on their way up, maybe on their way down. And they're just out there to kind of warm up the crowd, the opening band. I'm Linda's opening band. So, she asked me to tell you the story. It's a story about the Christmas geese. There once was a man who didn't believe in God, and he didn't hesitate to let others know how he felt about religion and religious holidays like Christmas. His wife, however, did believe, and she raised their children to also have faith in God and the meaning of Jesus Christ, despite her husband's disparaging comments. One snowy Christmas Eve, the wife was taking her children to a Christmas Eve service in the farm community where they lived. She asked him to come, but he refused. That story is nonsense, he said. Why would God lower himself to come to earth as a man called Jesus Christ? That's ridiculous. So she and the children left, and he stayed home. A while later, the winds grew stronger, and the snow turned into a blizzard. As the man looked out the window, all he saw was a blinding snowstorm. He sat down and relaxed before the fire for the evening when he heard a loud thump, something that hit the window. Then another thump. He looked out but couldn't see more than a few feet. When the snow let up a little bit, he ventured outside to see what could have been beaten on his window, and in the field near his house, he saw a flock of wild geese. Apparently they'd been flying south for the winter, got caught up in the snowstorm, and couldn't go on. They were lost, stranded on this farm, no food, no shelter. They just flapped their wings and flew around the field in low circles, blindly and aimlessly. A couple of them had flown into his window, it seemed. Well, the man felt sorry for the geese, and he wanted to help them. The barn, he thought, would be a great place for them to stay. It's warm, safe, surely they could spend the night, wait out the storm, and be on their way the next morning. So he walked over to the barn, he opened the doors wide, and watched and waited, hoping they'd notice the open barn and go inside, but they're geese. They just fluttered around aimlessly and didn't seem to notice the barn or realize what it could mean to them. He tried to get their attention, but that just scared them even more, and they moved further away. He went into the house, got some bread, came out, broke it up, and made the breadcrumb trail leading to the barn, and they still didn't catch him. And I was getting frustrated. He got behind him, tried to shoot him toward the barn, but they only got more scared and scattered in every direction except toward the barn. Nothing he did could get them to go to the barn where they'd be warm and safe. Why don't they follow me? Can't they see this is the only place where they can survive the storm? When he thought for a moment, he realized they just wouldn't follow a human or animals. If only I were a goose, then I could save what he said out loud. And that gave him an idea. He went into the barn, got one of his own geese, carried it in his arms as he circled around behind the other geese, the flock, and then released it. But his goose just right through that flock of geese and right back to the barn. And one by one, the other geese followed and they were safe. They stood quietly for a moment as the words he had spoken a few minutes earlier were replayed in his mind. If only I were a goose, then I could save them. 
when he thought about what he said to his wife earlier, why would God want to lower himself to be like us? That's ridiculous. And suddenly it all made sense to him. That's what God had done. We were the geese. Blind, lost, perishing. And God had his son to come like us who would show us the way and enlighten us. That was the meaning of Christmas, he realized, as the winds and blinding snow died down, his soul became quiet and pondered this wonderful thought. Suddenly he understood what it was all about, why Jesus Christ had come so we could become the sons and daughters of the living God. Years of doubt and disbelief vanished like the passing storm, and he fell on his knees in the snow and prayed his first prayer. Thank you, God, for coming in human form to get me out of the storm. And the moral is, don't tell God how big your storm is. Tell your storm how big your God is.
Christmas cheer. Christmas cheer. And I want to ask you to turn in the Bible with me to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. You know, this time of year there's a lot of hustle and bustle for many of us. And then on top of that, some have, have to quote a uh, cult with a, a funeral, a death of a loved one, or memories of that, or, or a wedding, or, or, or sickness, and there's so much that we have to cope with, and then during this time of year, it, it seems like it just flies by. Uh, Christmas comes every six months to me, it seems like. I don't know about to you, but it's a lot of busyness about it, and Sometimes it's easy to lose sight of what it's about this morning. Every Sunday morning, Alicia and I pray together. And if we go in the same vehicle, she prays while I'm driving. So if you see us come to church and she's got her head down, she's actually praying, okay? She's not mad at it. Most of the time. But that's how we come to church. And this morning, I, you know, I didn't even ask her to pray. But she bowed her head, started to pray. And in the back of her vehicle yesterday, my grandchildren couldn't make the big heavens thing, so some presents were given to them. So they were in the back of our vehicle for us to take to them. And as she started praying, this is what sounded. Every bump I hit, I, 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 I'm Batman. <laughs> and if it stuttered like that, I'm not kidding you. I guess if there was a bump, it would start over. And all the way to church, I, 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 I'm Batman. That's what we heard. I, I guess I could have pulled over. We were trying to get here by 9 o'clock for a praise team practice. And um, so while she was praying, it was a Christmas present, kind of distracting us as we were praying to come to church. And, you know, that's just one small example of how the whole season can be uh, to many of us. Uh, being in the military, you know, you're concentrating on going on leave and, and maybe traveling uh, across states to go see family. You're thinking about all of that.
We're born in sin. We're sinners. And there's things in my past that I hope none of you find out about. <coughs> okay? Our past is full of sin. From the very beginning. We're talking about Christmas cheer. Don't forget that. But the way we make decisions, if we stray from God's Word, all of our experiences that we rely on to make decisions, to, to help us or to learn from, all of that is tainted by sin. All of it. Everything we are is tainted by sin. All the worldly decisions we come up with and all the explanation of why everyone else is wrong or, or why everything, our being is tainted by past sins. Of trouble. 
full of trouble. You know, uh, yesterday, our children came in, and our grandchildren, and we were, our immediate family, we were going to do Christmas and all of that, and, and our youngest grandson, Carter, and I was RSV, if I said that right, and, and then before I even got out of bed, Abby had to take him to the emergency room. He has uh, pneumonia now. So it kind of made us late for ours, and then they didn't get to go to the big family's Christmas. Folks, that's trouble. We all experience that. And it's all because of sin. You know, the consequences of sin is death. And we will reap what we sow. And so if you sow to the flesh, there's consequences to that. For the believer also, there are consequences to sin. So all the troubles that we have, now some, sometimes we go through trouble and trials and temptations, and we will understand it better by and by Job. You can look at the life of Job, and you know, he was a great man. He was a sinner, but he went through, you know, just tremendous, tremendous trial and in tests and and you know it, it proved his faith and you know it makes us stronger but let's all face it our present state of life is full of trouble from the world stage to the personal it's full of trouble we're talking about Christmas cheer y'all still with me Christmas cheer Let's read on in Genesis. Let's read on in Genesis, verse 20, chapter 3. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God, made tunics of skin and clothed them. So there had to be a death there to, to really cover them. You know, the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. So, there was a shedding of blood. They were covered because the fig leaves just couldn't do it. That's something they worked up themselves, and it could not cover them properly. Let's um, look in verse 22. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil, and now let he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden, and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Now if they would have taken up the tree of life, we would have had to live, they would have had to live for all eternity in that sinful condition. You know, they were driven out of the presence of God. And now we're told in Genesis chapter 5, verse 1, this is the book of genealogy of Adam. In the day that God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. He created them male and female and blessed them and called them mankind in the day they were created. And Adam lived 130 years, begot a son in his own likeness after his image, and named him says, so Adam was a sinner, now his son is a sinner. He was in the likeness of Adam. Verse 4, And he begot said, the days of Adam were, were 800 years, and he had sons and daughters. So all the days that Adam lived were 900 
in 30 years. That's a long time, wasn't it? I mean, a long time. Could you imagine all that he knew? All the things he could do? Even in his sinful state? That's not the end of the verse. It says, and he died. So folks, our future, man's future is nothing but death. That's some Christmas cheer, isn't it? Cheer up. Come on. Our future is death. Cheer up. Come on, everyone. Come on. He died. We're going to die. Our future is death. Doesn't matter, you know, how long you can stay alive and you know, all that's all well and good, but someday you're going to die. And I am too. And everything, if you're not in Christ Jesus, all your decisions, your whole being is tainted by sin. You may think you know a whole bunch, but if it's not according to the very Word of God, it is tainted. You're going to die. I'm going to die. Our future is dead. Yesterday, at our Christmas thing, my mama was not there. My brother, who died at the age of 49, he had AIDS because he was a homosexual. And he died of AIDS. But thank God he repented and turned to Christ and lived for Christ the last few years of his life. Amen. I'm going to see him someday. But they were not there. Why? Because of death. Death, we're all got to do it. Our future is dead. Christmas cheer. Y'all ready for some Christmas cheer? The last point this morning. Because of the fright of man, where our past is sin, our present is trouble because of sin. And our future is death because of sin. Number four, because of our plight, the plight of man, God came to us. That's a hallelujah. That's the cheer. That's a hallelujah right there. God came to us. In Matthew chapter 1, Matthew chapter 1, verse 20, but while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. That's Christmas cheer, isn't it? Save it from our sins. You know what? I could go through all the scripture, but we must turn by faith in faith to Jesus. In repentance of sin, and realize all of our decision making, all of our explanations, all of our justifications, it's tainted by sin. So our faith, our hope can be in Jesus Christ. And we repent of all of that and we turn to Christ. And I promise you, He will save you from your sins. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Look in verse 23. Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God.
God with us. Now, He's an eternal God. Those past sins, you know what? He can forgive us of those past sins. Isn't that wonderful? The Bible explains it. He throws them as far as these is from the west. Never be remembered no more. He washes us. He cleanses us by the blood of the Lamb. The precious sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. That's how he saves us from our sin. But this eternal God can forgive us of our past. This eternal God is a God of the present. He is with us in those troubles. He is with us, with us in our trials. And, and, and he gives an escape when we're tempted. He is present with us. God is with us in our troubles. And he is God in the future. Because when we trust in Jesus, we have eternal life. Yes, we're going to die, but we have everlasting life. This body that I die, I don't want to live like this for all eternity. I don't. I'm looking for a new body someday, aren't you? So even in eternity, He's God. God with us. Listen to this. My last passage of Scripture, Titus. Titus chapter 3. I hope they're talking about Jesus, whoever they're talking about there, don't you? Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. Beginning in verse 3. Listen to this. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. That's how we used to be without Christ, right? But when the kindness and the love of God, our Savior toward man, appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. That's a description of being born again. I mean, pour it out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that having been justified by His grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying. And these things I want you to affirm constantly that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. So God came, His grace, His love toward us, and He saves us by His Holy Spirit convicting us and we're washed by the blood of the Lamb and, and we are in Christ and the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit resides in us. Now is that just to say I'm a Christian and, and don't worry about it ever again? Is that why God saved us? No. He saved us to have a relationship with him. Let me tell you something. I know this firsthand. God hates sin. He hates it. He hates it in my I mean I can get so convicted sometimes that I can you gotta be right. You gotta be right in the fellowship with him. One and the other. It's called fellowship. It's a relationship. So he saves us. What was lost in the Garden of Eden is gained back. God is with us. He doesn't have to ask us where we're at. He resides in us. And now we have a relationship with him. That is Christmas cheer. Amen.
praying and had accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior uh, because of godly uh, parents uh, that had been sharing Christ with him, living Christ in front of him. And he wants to come and be a, a member of our church, and in covenant with us, and follow the Lord in believers' baptism on January the 6th. What's the feeling of the church? Everyone say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, Christmas cheer. 